couple of weeks ago before I went in the hospital, I, I know I posted, I saw it on there, and I posted it. I saw this morning somebody else posted, but with a different picture, talking about something I didn't realize, but there was this guy that posted on Facebook, said one of his sheep, which was his head sheep, uh, got bit by a rattlesnake, got bit on the face. Uh, but it was the one that all the other sheep followed. And, uh, but anyway, that he said he watched that thing. It, it was all swelled up and he was worried about it. But he saw it didn't act like it bothered the lamb at all. So the lamb went on eating, grazing, went on and ate some feed that night when he gave him feed and drinking water. And after about two days, the swelling went down and he went and talked to a doctor about it. I never heard of it before. I don't know if y'all have, but uh, lamb's blood is used as an anti-venom of rattlesnake poison. And I never knew that. Also, sometimes they use a horse's blood too, but the lamb's blood is the main one. But where I'm going at with this is that lamb knew it didn't have nothing to worry about. Even though that he got bit by that uh, snake, he knew he didn't have nothing to worry about. Well, I started praying and thinking, because I tell you, since I I never, in my younger life, I never knew I was going to be a preacher. I certainly didn't, uh, never knew I was going to be a goat farmer. Uh, it's just something God ordained and God placed in my life, you know. This man probably knows me longer than anybody in my life. Uh, he, he's my uncle, but uh, he knows all about me. So I'm sure when the family heard John Rogers became a preacher, they all probably had to sit down for a little bit and wave with a fan or <laughs> figure it out. But especially the first time I did that little revival thing in Palmetto, in my grandma Rogers church, and all the drug dealers and prostitutes filled up the church. And my, my grandmother was just shaking her head, <laughs> with her head, head hanging on John and John and John. <laughs> but, uh, that's just the way life was at the time. I, I never expected to be these things. And God knows more than what we know. But as I looked at this lamb, I thought, man, how many snake pits have I been in in my life? How many venomous vipers have I walked into a den of them? You know, every day in my life for years, honestly. Had them at my side, had them at my back. Supposedly, my bodyguards, but they were nothing but vipers, you know. That's probably the only man I ever trusted with my whole life with anybody I that was around me. And, uh, you know, just like this brother here, Norm, he's, he's my brother, right? He don't know me like you know me, but he's my brother. I know he's got mine and I got his. That's just the way it is. You know when you're around a real brother. But, you know, John... There's a, in the book of John, there's a scripture talking about John the Baptist. As he looks out and Jesus is walking towards him, he says, Look upon the Lamb of God. That's what came in. And I think it's in Revelation. There's 27 times, I think I read. 27 times in the book of Revelation that mentions the Lamb of God. What does the Lamb of God do? What does the blood of Jesus do for us? It covers all our sins every sin we've ever had. You know, I, I've shared with this group before, there's times I, I felt guilty and not able to sleep at night of some of the things I did in my past life. But it took God to remind me, he done forgot about them. They've been done covered with the blood of Jesus. Don't worry about them, they're not there no more. You know, when people want to pick me apart or judge me, well, God done forgave me. You know, he walked into that courtroom and in that courtroom, he paid that he paid that bail that was on me. He paid it. He released me and got me out of jail, set me free. Not necessarily behind bars, but the captivity of where we're at a lot of times in our own brain, in our own head. Because our own head can be the worst jail any of us can really get called up into sometimes. You know, one of the biggest tools of Satan, this big serpent itself, is depression. And I don't know about y'all, but some of my worst days, that depression's trying to work on me, it's trying to dig in, it's trying to claw in. And you gotta fight that depression. And you gotta remember, we gotta remember just like that lamb who we are. 
because we're also covered in the blood. We're also the adopted son of God. By being an adopted son of God, we're of a different lineage. Now, our lineage changed. It's just like my adopted children, their last name's Rogers, just like my natural children. They have the same inheritance as my natural children, my adopted children, because I took it on me to take on the responsibility of them being my children, loving them, no matter what. That agape love, it's not about whether they're good or they're bad or they're an asshole or they're the biggest angel in the world. They're your child and you took that responsibility and you love them. You know, there's a couple of them I wanted to knock upside the head a couple of times, but I still, I love them. I care about them, you know. You, you'll, you'll give your life for them. Straight up. That's just how it is. Well, if we'll do that, think about how more, a million times more, our Heavenly Father will do for each and every one of us. I just went through a battle, y'all. Nobody really knows but me and my wife knows because she was witnessing this. I honestly didn't think I'd be back here. I was that sick. I, I thought, but then I kept listening. He, he's not done. I, I share what's happening up in New Jersey. I think this right here is going to turn into one of the biggest biker churches that Florida's ever saw. If we just stick to it, we got to be faithful and stick to it. Everybody's not going to come all the time, but that's all right. If we don't want them where people feel guilty because they're not in church, like you said, we should come here because we enjoy coming, not that we feel pressured to come, that we feel we have to come. Because I'm going to tell you, you don't have to come. But how good is it to fellowship with brothers and sisters of the like mind, of the same mind? Of who we are, you know? I can't even imagine what God saw in me in my life. I can't imagine. But he saw something nobody else saw. And and Ann and I was sitting and talking about it. Hey, this thing means a lot to me, what's happening in Jersey. This means a lot to me, what's happening here. And there's too many name ties that are tying together for it not to be a God. And he's got a plan. And we got to be obedient to that plan and follow his plan. Brothers, I'm going to tell you something right now. God's led me to more people to help more people outside of the church than he ever did inside the church. Because inside the church, most of the time you're preaching to the choir. And people are getting embarrassed and won't come to help if they need help. You know, or if they're having a problem with one of their kids, anything. They won't come to you. But we all need to be praying for one another. You know, the thing that broke my heart one time the most, and I really try to watch my friends and my, my congregation, but I had a guy, I, I was noticing him acting a little funny, and he was wearing gloves to church, and I figured he had some, maybe his hands were breaking out or something. I didn't know what was going on. But he, he left me a podium and a little sign-in sheet. He, he owned the funeral home. But he gave me this little podium and a thing where you put a book up and sign in, register. I thought, well, that's kind of strange. I wonder why he's doing that. Well, two days later, they found him dead at his house. He shot his wife and committed suicide. But you're looking in a brother's eyes, and we get so called up with... I mean, me as a pastor, I try to figure out everybody. And it's hard to put my mind on everybody what's going on. But that broke my heart, man. I asked God, why didn't you show me that? Why couldn't I see what was happening there? Well, maybe I wasn't supposed to. I don't know what was going on in his life and his wife's life. I know they were a good couple. I know she was suffering with a disease. And I know it's hard to look at somebody you love so much suffering. It's a very hard thing to do. But we go, we're going this afternoon to see our mom, Ann's mom in the nursing home. And you know the hardest thing in the world is to do is walk in there and see her asleep sitting up in a wheelchair in the middle of the hall. It just infuriates you. It gets you so angry, you know. But a lot of these places, they just don't have enough people to help, you know. But it got to the point where we can't do it no more. We took care of her for four years and more. But she can't, you know, we can't turn her. We, she can't walk at all, bathe her, all, all the other things that you need help to assist to do. So, but just keep her in prayer. But it's just, I think it's a shame how America does their elderly. There shouldn't be where they take your property to put you in a nursing home. 
You know, it should be automatic that you're a citizen of this country. Our country should take care of their own, I feel. So look at all this money we sent overseas, how we could have took care of our elderly. You know? But we don't do it. But I'm going to end them with this. Don't forget who you are. Don't forget what blood is in your veins. Don't forget we carry the anti-venom of the serpent. Because he done whooped them. He done, when he came out of that grave, climbed off that cross and came out of that grave, you know, he done whooped the devil. The Bible clearly says he went to the pits of hell for three days and preached the revival. And then he came out of the pits of hell. But the devil was whooped at that time. But see, we all believe a lie that he's still got control. And he does if we allow him to. But we can't allow him. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for these men and women that have come today. Uh, Father, as we pray, I don't want to forgive Brother Scott, Lord, uh, as he uh, heals from this surgery he just went through. Bless him, Lord. Uh, just give him that divine touch. Go to each member that comes here, wherever they're at today. Father, you know who they are. You know their hearts. You know their needs. Hear their prayer, O oh Lord. Thank you for Norman for traveling such a long distance to come up just to fellowship and hear a word from you, Lord. And thank you for my brother Bucky that he was obedient and felt that need to be here today. We just give you all the praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. God